वेलकम गाइज इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मिथ्योनिन द बेसिक प्रॉपर्टीज एंड वॉट आर द वेरियस क्लिनिकल को रिलेशन आर दर सो वेन इट कम्स टू मिथ्योनिन आई कैन सी दैट विद द न्यूमोनिक दैट वी यूज टू फाइंड आउट वेदर इट इज एसेंशियल और नॉट टी वी टिल नाइन पी एम एच एम इज दर सो आई कैन से दैट इट इज एसेंशियल अमीनो एसिड इट इज अमीनो एसिड विच ऑल्सो कंटेन्स सल्फर कंटेन्स सल्फर the codon of methionin we need to remember we do not have to remember all the codons but we need to remember the codon of methionin the codon of methionin is aug aug and else we need to remember is that the methionin is a essential amino acid and it is particularly low in pulses the quantity of methionin is very low is almost absent in pulses so those vegetarians who are solely dependent on pulses as their protein source if they are not taking any other protein sources and they are only dependent on pulses then the chances that the methionin deficiency may occur so i can say that uh, the quantity is low in pulses quantity is low in pulses so these are the the basic points that uh, one should be aware uh, regarding the methionine one should be aware of methionine now when it comes to the methionine metabolism that is very important part methionine metabolism what happens in methionine metabolism is see methionine can convert into a molecule that is referred as s adenosyl methionin s adenosyl methionin which is in short written as sam now how it is made what we do is we we bring atp into the picture we we use the atp along with that we will use the glutathione and what we do is this atp the adenosyl group is transferred on the sulfur sulfur group of the methionine because methionine is a sulfur containing amino acid so what we do is we take the adenosyl group and we transfer on the sulfur of the methionine so the name of the enzyme is methionine adenosyl transferase the name of the enzyme is methionine adenosyl because we are transferring the adenosyl group so the name of enzyme is methionine adenosyl transferase mat mat now you have got the s adenosyl methionine what is the use of s adenosyl methionine is see s adenosyl methionine is a methyl donor is a methyl donor means what it will do is it will donate the methyl group it will donate the methyl group whomsoever is the acceptor whomsoever wants the methyl group will come and will take from the sam if you take out the methyl group from the sam then the sam converts into a similar molecule that is referred as s adenosyl homocysteine s adenosyl homocysteine then this homocysteine s adenosyl homocysteine can convert into a very critical molecule and that is referred as homocysteine that is called as homocysteine uh the name of the enzymes are not important that is why i am not writing i am just writing the name of the enzymes which are important for the exam purpose so the s adenosyl homocysteine will convert back to homocysteine and that is the critical point now why it is critical because this homocysteine has two choices either it can convert back into methionine it can convert back into methionine and when it converts into methionine the name of the enzyme is methionine synthase methionine synthase and for the functioning of this methionine synthase we require vitamin b12 and vitamin b9 these are very critical the functioning of the methionine synthase so vitamin b9 and b12 are going to be required if we want to exit from the homocysteine towards the methionine side there is one more way by which we can exit from the homocysteine that it can convert into a molecule that is referred as cystathione cystathione now to convert into cystathione we require an enzyme that is called as cystathione beta synthase it is called as cystathione beta synthase and for that we require the vitamin b6 as a coenzyme b6 coenzyme so homocysteine can exit towards the methionine side or it can exit towards the cystathione side once you made the cystathione the cystathione uh, further can convert into cysteine 
and if we have the two molecules of cysteine and you club them together with the help of disulfide bond it will convert into cysteine convert into cysteine so this is how the homocysteine will exit now why i am so much focusing on homocysteine why i am so much focusing on homocysteine because homocysteine is a very critical molecule in the pathogenesis of several diseases see homocysteine i am saying that it can exit it can exit towards the methionine and for that the critical molecules that is required is the b9 and the b12 these are the critical ones and when you want to exit towards the cysteathione side the critical molecule is the cysteathione beta synthase these are the critical things these are the three molecules which are very critical in the metabolism of homocysteine or i can say in the exit of the homocysteine so if there is deficiency of any of the three the homocysteine will be unable to exit it will accumulate in the body and that is referred as hyperhomocysteinemia so let's write down this point that what is hyperhomocysteinemia hyperhomocysteinemia is basically there is increased of the homocysteine level in the blood if there is increase in the homocysteine level in the blood that will be, uh, that will be a risk factor for several disorders right so why it is important because increased level of homocysteine is a risk factor for is a risk factor for premature atherosclerosis premature atherosclerosis it is also a risk factor for dementia it is also a risk factor for aging means premature aging so homocysteine is basically it's, uh, it leads to a hypercoagulable state and if there is increased coagulability of the blood it will clot and it when can can lead to myocardial infarction can lead to deep vein thrombosis because there is increased amount of the tendency of getting the blood clotted so ha uh, having understood all this if i say that what are the the causes of hyperhomocysteinemia causes of hyper homocysteinemia the most common cause the most common cause for increase amount of homocysteine i told you that there are three critical things to exit from the homocysteine and the most common cause is the deficiency of cysteathione beta synthase you can see in the pathway cysteathione beta synthase that is the, one, the most common cause for the increased level of homocysteine then the second most common cause is vitamin b12 deficiency and the third most common cause is the vitamin b9 deficiency so these are the three deficiencies that can lead to homocysteinemia hyperhomocysteinemia among these three if they ask that which is the most common one the most common and the most important is the cysteine beta synthase deficiency whether it is due to de the deficiency of any of the molecule the symptoms are going to remain the same so how the patient of homocysteinemia or hyperhomocysteinemia is going to present to us see the clinical features will uh, will we will divide into two things see uh, the the person who is having hyperhomocysteine levels the person who is having increased amount of homocysteine level the severity uh, depends on the symptom severity depends that how much uh, the levels are high right so you may have heard that in uh, in the young age group also the myocardial infarctions the heart attacks are occurring and the persons are getting died of that right so why there is increase myocardial infarction in the young age group normally uh, myocardial infarction occurs in the 50s 60s and so on but that can occur in the earlier age group and one of the risk factor for that is the homo homocysteinemia right i told you that it leads to premature atherosclerosis and then can lead to a premature myocardial infarction and the person may die of that so how the person will present to you there are certain body features that are very peculiar for the uh, homocysteinemia and what are that the person will have a tall stature the person will have a tall stature normally the arm span means if you measured your arm span from the tip of the middle finger from the uh, from the left hand to the right hand if you measure it it is equal to your height it is equal to your height but in these patient because they have the long fingers that is called as arachnodactyly arachnodactyly the, the the arms upper arm will be long the upper limbs will be long so what you are going to notice that the arm span is going to be more than the height normally it is going to be equal but here it is going to be high there will be as i as i said there will be arachnodactyly 
archenodactyly is going to be there there will be high arc palate high arc palate normally there is a arc in the palate and there will be a high arc that is a feature then there will there can be ectopia lentis means the lens of the eye will be dislocated the the septum that is there in the nose it may be perforated that is called as the nasal septal defect so these are the various body features that can be there in a patient of hyperhomocystinemia all these features can also be seen in marfan syndrome can be seen in marfan syndrome so these body features are referred as marfanoid habitus marfanoid habitus let's say you are sitting in a opd uh, you are sitting in a opd and a patient comes to you looking like this marfanoid habitus right so you need to differentiate whether it is going towards the marfan syndrome or it goes towards the homocystinemia because both of them will have this marfanoid habitus whether it is marfan syndrome or hyperhomocystinemia how to rule out that i told you that hyperhomocystinemia hyperhomocystinemia it leads to a hypercoagulable state and there will be formation of the thrombus that is going to be there so in these patient along with marfanoid habitus you will have a history of recurrent thromboembolism recurrent thromboembolism that is going to be there and how to elicit that most of the time it will be in the form of deep vein thrombosis most of the time it will be in the form of deep vein thrombosis so mostly it occurs in the lower limb so what you do is you press the calf muscle if there is thrombosis in the calf muscle there will be severe pain you squeeze the calf muscle and with this severe pain it is suggestive that it can be thrombosis can be there so sitting in the opd patient comes to you he is looking like marfan syndrome marfanoid habitus is there you squeeze the calf muscle there is severe pain that is probably it can be a case of hyperhomocystinemia so you uh, what is the investigation that you are going to order for this patient the investigation that we are going to order is the levels of the homocysteine level of homocysteine so the blood level of the homocysteine is going to be increased and that will confirm the diagnosis it is the time to treat the patient i told you that the that the most common cause for hyperhomocystinemia is cystathione beta synthase deficiency we do not have the synthetic form of this enzyme so what we can do is how to treat this patient now see here the the treatment is hidden in the pathway if you see this this is the the problematic molecule that is the homocysteine and that is increasing because of the deficiency of the cystathione beta synthase so how to overcome this situation what you can do is you can use the vitamin b6 you give the vitamin b6 supplementation so the homocysteine will able to exit or you can give the supplementation of b9 and b12 so the treatment consists of three things that you are going to use vitamin b6 b6 supplementation b9 supplementation and the b12 supplementation and all these has to be given lifelong lifelong has to be supplemented so this is how the hyperhomocystinemia is going to be treated and is very vital and is very important to understand that uh, we can save a life if we make a diagnosis in the early part before the myocardial infarction occurs if we make the diagnosis we can save a life right so this is why it is important to understand this uh, homocysteine levels here itself uh, i want to add, uh, i want you to understand the 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 function of the sam the function of so this is all about the hyperhomocystinemia now we'll discuss the function of sam what is the sam stands for s adenosyl methionine s adenosyl methionine we have discussed the sam in multiple videos in different different topics we have discussed about the sam in the amino acid only so what is sam is sam is basically is a methyl donor i can say it is a methyl donor whenever we require the methyl group we will call the sam and that is going to donate the methyl group say for example where we have used the sam the the same we have used was we had the norepinephrine if we want to convert into epinephrine what you need to do is you need to add the methyl group and from where the methyl group will come from the sam so i can say what is epinephrine is basically it's a methylated form of norepinephrine so i can say that what is epinephrine is a methylated form of norepinephrine this is one way this is one of the example where we have used the sam let's see the other uses of sam 
if you want to convert serotonin into melatonin we have discussed in the tryptophan video in that also you need to add the methyl group and for that you will be requiring the same the third time that we have discussed was when you convert the guanido acetate guanido acetate into creatine for that also we need to add the methyl group and for that we are going to require the same so these are the few examples where we have used the same molecule apart from that also that is used in multiple other places but these are the three important ones that one should be aware of so these are the uses of same let's understand a pathology that is with the name of cysteine urea because we are discussing the sulfur containing amino acid so we will discuss a, a, a pathology that is with the name of cysteine urea let's understand what is that there are there is a particular group of amino acid which are called as diabasic amino acid which are called as diabasic amino acid so let's write down what happens is there is something called as diabasic amino acid means the amino acid which contains two basic groups they are called as diabasic so the structural and the functional unit of the kidney is the nephron let's say this is the diagrammatic representation of the nephron now this diabasic amino acid will come in the nephron via the glomerulus when these amino acid comes in the filtrate they are supposed to be absorbed back and supposed to be sent back to the near blood near uh, nearby capillaries but let's say there is a mutation in several channels the names are not important there are mutation in several channels so these diabasic amino acids are not getting absorbed so what can happen is that these diabasic amino acid will remain in the tubules and these diabasic amino acid will be lost in the urine diabasic amino acid lost in urine if it happens this is referred as this is referred as the cysteine urea so what is cysteine urea cysteine urea is basically loss of diabasic amino acid in urine now what they ask is that what are the examples of diabasic amino acid we have so the mnemonic to this is what are the diabasic amino acid we have the mnemonic to this is cola cola C stands for cysteine O stands for ornithine lysine and arginine these are the diabasic amino acid we have the mnemonic is cola so if the cysteine ornithine lysine arginine that is going to be lost in the urine that is called as the cysteine urea that is called as cysteine urea a pathology that is called as the garot tetrad garot tetrad here itself i want you to understand what is garot tetrad is what is garot's tetrad see garot's tetrad is a combination of four disease is a combination of four disease what are the four disease that are there in the garot's tetrad one is obviously just now we have discussed that is the cysteine urea along with that there will be albinism that is due to defect of the tyrosinase enzyme the tyrosinase is not there will lead to albinism along with that there will be alkapton urea alkapton urea is due to defect in the hg oxidase that is homogenetic acid oxidase we have discussed in a separate video and along with that if there is essential pentosuria essential pentosuria if there is all these pathologies occurs simultaneously this is referred as garot tetrad this is referred as garot tetrad so what is uh, cysteine urea is basically what is cysteine urea is loss of diabasic amino acid loss of diabasic amino acid this is a pathology albinism it is due to deficiency of tyrosinase we have discussed in the tyrosine amino acid alkapton urea is due to deficiency of hga oxidase enzyme if this enzyme is not there it will lead to uh, the alkapton urea essential pentosuria is due to defect of xylitol dehydrogenase xylitol dehydrogenase if this enzyme is not there then again uh, the the pentose uh, xylose sugar will be lost in the urine that is called as the essential pentosuria so this is the garot tetrad thank you